Okay, so here we are doing remote learning. This is the first video, so I doubt it will be particularly good and uh, perhaps quality will improve in time. But I thought I'd start out with a short topic talking about the last little bit of transformers. And what I wanted to show you was a, a cutaway. Someone has taken a bandsaw here and, and gone through this, the middle of this transformer. And this is a type of transformer where you see that the, uh, the primary windings, so the really narrow stuff that I'm kind of drawing around there, okay, and over here, those primary windings are on the interior, so wrapped directly around the, the core material here in the middle and wrapped then around but electrically isolated so you see the little bit of insulation between the two stacks of copper wires and wrapped around that you have the secondary coils and this is done in a lot of transformers assuming there's not too much heat and things like that that could build up when you've sort of got everything stacked on top of each other like this <clears throat> this is done so that all of the field lines created by the oscillating voltage that you pipe into the primary winding have to go through because primary winding is internal to the secondary sort of wound inside and they have to go through the secondary winding so there is no energy loss in terms of you know magnetic field lines that might not actually pass through the secondary winding so uh, in addition to showing that sort of design thing, what I wanted to show was also this core material. Now here it's labeled as uh, iron core material, so here in the underlining, new technology here. So iron core, and one that's often not actually iron uh, these days, power transformers like this one. So power transformers being ones used in for like 50 or 60 Hertz AC signals. So in distributing, distributing electrical power around the United States or Europe or any other power grid and transforming those kind of voltages. Anyway, what they tend to be made out of in terms of core material is silicon steel. It doesn't really matter. It's another ferromagnetic material for us. But the thing I really wanted to point out was this, this second word here in front of core, which is laminated. And they show the laminations here. So when they cut through, they pulled apart some of the laminations. So you see that instead of being one chunk of iron, what they've done is they've taken a whole bunch of little slices of iron or silicon steel or whatever ferromagnetic material, and then they've laminated them together. So in other words, in between each one of these little slices up here, okay, is some insulator, like a varnish so that currents cannot pass from one layer to the other. And that turns out to be a really important thing because of something called an eddy current. So if you were to imagine uh, here, so this, this one right here, that one being uh, an example of a transformer with a solid core. So solid cores, as you can see in the first point here, mean large area perpendicular to the changing magnetic field. So the blue arrow here being the magnetic field and the resulting induced currents. So we're changing magnetic field, right? And even though we don't have a loop or wire, we have this big chunk of okay conducting material. And so what you get when you change the magnetic field here is eddy currents going around and around and around and around, eddying, swirling. And uh, when you have a solid core, meaning a large area, so that captures a bunch of different field lines, it leads to large induced currents in the core. And these currents, of course, you need energy to make charges all go in a particular direction. And so you get a lot of energy being lost in that process. <coughs> Pardon me. However, uh, when you laminate things, so again, imagine that you've got some insulation at all of these insul interfaces between the laminations. Oh, you can see my drawing skills I need to get a little bit better here. Doing it all with a mouse rather than a sort of stylus, so that makes it tough. Um, again, you've got same magnetic field, everything like that, but now you've separated all of these little island, little, little bits of um, 
okay conductor, so this ferromagnetic core material. And so you get a bunch of little small areas perpendicular to the changing magnetic field. That leads to relatively small induced currents in the core, and so less current, so less energy is lost. This is a big thing in particularly power transformers, but really any uh, type of transformer that's, that's dealing with this issue where you have uh, an okay conductor as a ferromagnetic core, and if you allow these eddy currents to be set up by the changing magnetic field, well then a lot of the energy that you want to go from primary to secondary, it just doesn't go. And it is frittered away, uh, setting up these eddy currents, which just swirl around in the core material and don't, um, don't show up on the secondary where you want to power whatever circuit you've connected to it. So. Uh, one question that sometimes comes up is like, okay, well, this, it's the same amount of total area and it's the same changing magnetic flux or changing number of magnetic field lines or changing magnetic field, however you want to think about that. Um, so why is the total different? And the, the short answer to that is that notice how these are very constrained, very sort of long elliptical paths for the current to swirl around in eddies. And so the resistance to the current to flow is much higher than if you have a relatively unconstrained system like you do up here uh, in the, the solid core. So I think I'll wind up the video there. It's about uh, seven minutes long. I'm gonna try to make most of my videos somewhere in the neighborhood of this, plus or minus, you know, two, three minutes. And we'll, we'll see how we do here. Welcome to the, to, to the new reality of electricity and electronics. Thank you very much.